What is the hubbiest hub? Well, if you're a bit of an av geek, your knee-jerk answer might be Atlanta. After all, they are the largest hub in the world. But there's the key word, largest. I want to know which hub is the hubbiest. Okay, so what do I even mean by that? Well, a hub's truest purpose is to efficiently transfer people from one flight to a connecting flight. So the best indicator of a hubbiest hub would be to see which hub funneled the most connecting passengers. But I'm also interested in how hubby a hub is in proportion to its local metro area's population. After all, if Little Salt Lake City connected 10 million passengers in one year, that'd be much more impressive than if giant Chicago did the same. So we're gonna need two data sets, metro area population and number of connecting passengers. For the year, we'll use 2019, since that's the last normal year we've had in quite a while. But for funsies, I also analyzed the data from 2020 to see what changes when you shut down the entire world. And there were, in fact, a few surprises. Let's start with normal 2019. For this case study, we'll take the 30 largest airports by passengers, and we'll also add any major supplemental airports that are in any of those top 30 metro areas that are not already in the list. So that is including the likes of Long Beach, Dallas Love Field, and a few others. Then we'll combine passenger data from airports in the same metro, like Midway and O'Hare, since there's no good way to proportionately or realistically break up population in those metros for one specific airport. And to note, we'll keep Baltimore and DC separate since they're over an hour apart, but we'll combine Miami and Fort Lauderdale since the opposite is true there. And then one more note regarding the passenger data, I'm just using total passenger numbers, not specifically just connecting passengers. I know that's not ideal, but OAG data is expensive and this channel isn't monetized. But don't worry, we can keep in mind that the average American goes on about two round trips a year, so that's roughly four flights a year. Anything above that can theoretically be chalked up to connecting passengers. Those are some hefty assumptions, but it'll have to do. So now, with all the data, let's begin analyzing it. The easiest way to get a sense of the hubbiest hub now will be to simply make a total passengers to population ratio. That is, the number of passengers divided by population. So the bigger number we get from that, the larger the ratio is of passengers for every one person living in that metro area signifying the hubbiness of a hub, especially if that number is over four, like we talked about. Average American, four trips a year. So here are those ratios, and now let's sort them from largest to smallest and put all of it into a bar graph. Et voila! Perhaps, unsurprisingly, Denver takes the number one spot, with an 11.3 passenger to population ratio for 2019. I mean, it is perfectly located, and Denver itself isn't an extremely populated city. So, no big surprise, I suppose. Now, moving on to second place, we have Las Vegas, which also makes sense, since it's a massive destination. But that's the thing, for me, it really shouldn't count because it isn't a hub where people connect, it's mainly just a destination. So you do with that as you wish, but in my mind it doesn't really count. And then in third is what I thought would actually be in the number one spot, since they have such a relatively small population, Salt Lake City. But considering it's mainly only used by Delta as a secondary hub, whereas both United and Southwest use Denver as a primary hub, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. Now as promised, let's look at this data again, but now for the year of 2020, where everything began seriously shutting down around March and stayed that way pretty much for the rest of the year. Denver is still first, but Charlotte shoots up four positions and gets itself into second place as the nation's hubbiest hub for 2020. This totally threw me off guard at first, but when I took a second to think about it, it made sense. When the world was shut down, there was essentially zero international travel. So if you wanted a break and you wanted to go somewhere nice for a vacation, you really only had domestic choices, mainly Florida and Puerto Rico. And you also had a few other ones a bit further south in the Caribbean Mexico, all of which Charlotte connects to. But other than that, there weren't too many other notable moves, except for Tampa moving up five positions, which again, Florida, and Silicon Valley 
Valley, falling four positions due to the strict lockdowns they had. So there you have it. If anyone, for some reason, asks you what the hubbiest hub in America is in proportion to its local area's population, you can tell them. Denver, with Las Vegas or Salt Lake being the runner-up, depending on how you look at it. Numbers and data obviously interest you since you're still watching, so may I recommend clicking the video on the right to learn about how United Airlines is getting away with calling itself the largest airline in the world when it is clearly not. And with that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one if you're subscribed.